this is Thomas Mishad. Welcome back to Foundations of Web Design. In this video, we're going to talk about working with Komodo Edit. Now, I'm over at activestate.com slash Komodo hyphen edit into the downloads section. And depending on your operating system, you might see a download button here for the Mac or Windows or Linux, or you can end up choosing one of the other packages down below. Now, they even have a beta in version 8.5 if you really want to do that. But I'm going to simply just work with the current version of version 8.02. When I click on the download button, you can come over here. You can sign up for their newsletter if you want to keep up to date with what's happening with Active State or with Komodo Edit. So that can be kind of like a a uh, good thing to do to knowing um, you know, what's kind of going on and when the updates are occurring. They also have like tips and tricks, case studies, things like that if you really want to do uh, to learn more, um, you know, sign up for their newsletter. You don't have to, but it can be helpful. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that window and I'm going to go into my downloads folder. That's where uh, my browsers end up putting the files that I download. And you'll notice that I've uh, got a little bit of time here before Komodo ends up fully going through might be my wireless not wanting to run very fast today. So let me just pause for a moment as this downloads. Okay, now that it's downloaded, I'm going to simply click on the disk image. And then all I have to do is drag the little icon from uh, here over onto the applications folder. And that installs it into the applications folder onto my computer. So I'm going to deselect off of Komodo Edit 8 and do a quick keyboard shortcut of Command E and that ejects the disk image. And then I'm just going to drag this over to the trash. There we go. I'm gonna select my applications folder and I'm gonna zoom on down to Komodo Edit. And let's see if I can actually remember, there we go, Komodo Edit 8. I'm gonna double click on opening this. Now before you open this, if uh, on your system preferences, you might get a little warning that says uh, that, hey, listen, we don't know this developer. I'm going to go down to System Preferences here, down in the dock, this little gear icon. And Security and Privacy, we can allow applications to be downloaded from, and we can say just the Mac App Store, the Mac App Store, and identified developers, or from anywhere. For some of the applications that we might be downloading for open source development, uh, Apple may not identify the software or those developers and so we might want to select anywhere and Komodo might be one of those. There's a couple of others especially for file transfer protocol that you'll definitely want to have anywhere selected. In order to get this option we need to click on the little lock icon there. You're going to enter in the password for your computer and then you can click on anywhere. So this is what the default setting is and we can pop it down to anywhere. And it'll say, hey, listen, are you sure you want to do this? Because you got to be careful because you could unknowingly install something on your computer that uh, isn't good for the computer. Okay, so I'm going to say allow from anywhere and click on the little icon again and then end up closing this. So uh, Komodo Edit 8 shouldn't be a problem with that, but just in case if you do run into that situation, that's where you can change your preferences for your machine. So I'm going to double click on Komodo Edit 8 and this is going to create a uh, welcome screen for me. After I click on that little OK, I want to open this up. All right, so I'll close my applications folder here and this is the start page for Komodo Edit. You can quickly go right in and create a new file, a new project, whatever you want to do. You can look at the tutorials and documentation. So this might be a good thing for you to leave up for a while. If you no longer want this startup page, all you simply do, go to Komodo, go to Preferences. Under the category of Appearance, simply deselect Show the Startup Page and say OK. So if you want the startup, just keep this selected and you'll be good to go. So how do we create a text document within Komodo? There's a couple of things we can do. We can come over here to a quick link of creating a new file or we can do a file new new file and this is how I'm going to ask you to do most of your uh, documents of creating a new document until we kind of get into developing a template that we can just open up and have at our disposal so what we're just going to select is from the menu a file 
new and new file. And here it creates a quick little text document for us. What we want to make is an HTML document. So we're going to do a file save as. And where are we going to save this? I suggest for right now maybe placing it onto your desktop. You can place it into the documents folder. That's perfectly fine. But what we want to do is create a folder that our examples can go into. So I'm going to click on my little expansion button here and I'm going to go to the desktop. Now I already have a folder called FOWD for Foundations of Web Design. And inside of this folder, you can, uh, I'll show you just how to create a new folder. Right down in here, I'm going to create a new folder. So if you don't have FOWD, you can simply create a folder and name it FOWD and hit create. But inside of FOWD, I'm going to put in CH01 and folder. Now you don't need you know, a, a parent folder like FOWD if you don't want to. You can just simply create a folder and this is going to be our examples out of chapter one. So I'm going to put CH01 hyphen folder. Now the one thing that I want you to make sure of, don't put any uppercases in here, uh, uppercase letters. Um, it's best for right now just to keep a practice of doing all lowercase. Also no spaces. If you want, put it all as one word put an underscore in between the two words, or put a hyphen. Okay, so there's a reason for this. There's a method behind the madness, which will become more and more clear as we get further on into our chapters. But for right now, make sure you keep everything lowercase and no spaces. So now I'm gonna click on create, and inside of this chapter one folder, I'm gonna create my first HTML document. I'm going to name it index. HTML. Now what's interesting is, is that any website that you go to, the page that's first loaded, the home page that you normally know of, actually has the name of index in it. Now I'm not going to say that every single home page has the name of index. Sometimes it's default. Sometimes it can be something else. If they've set the web server to be um, or, or to want to load something other than the index.html first, by default, the index is the name of the document that the web browser normally goes to search for first. And so we want to leave that as index.html. The .html is telling the document that it's not a text document, but a, a hypertext markup language document. All right, so now we're gonna click on save, and there you have your first HTML document that you can start putting in your HTML elements into. In the next video, we're going to start putting in those global HTML elements to marking up our first HTML document. So before you close out here, remember always to save. You can do a file save or file save as, but normally you're just going to do a, a save. And it's normally a keyboard shortcut of Command S or a Control S on the Windows platform. All right, so we'll see you in the next video.